Welcome to the Spider Career Podcast with Laura Guzman and Ed Hill. We are discussing the career trajectories of spider researchers and also those who carry out important work that enables and supports the research being conducted. Today we are joined by Matt Keeling. Matt is the Director of Spider and a Professor in the Mathematics Institute and the School of Life Sciences at the University of Warwick with research interests in epidemiology, evolution and ecology. Join us for this episode as we discuss Matt's job role that involves leading our research group, supervising research projects and teaching students. Hi Matt, thanks for joining us today. Hi. Welcome to Spider Career Podcast. Thank you. So Matt, would you first be able to tell us uh, your path to obtaining this role as director of Spider and kind of what were the key stages where you developed your interest in mathematical biology more broadly? Okay, so I have shuffled backwards and forwards in my career between Warwick and Cambridge. So I was an undergraduate at Cambridge where I did a maths degree. Um, I then came to Warwick and did a PhD, which was fairly mathematical. Um, It did a lot of work on cellular automata, so very simple models that try and capture um, spatial dynamics. After that, I moved back to Cambridge to work with Brian Grenfell, and that was really when I started sort of becoming involved in mathematical biology. So a lot of the early work was on measles dynamics. Um, measles is, is almost the go-to disease to study if, if you're a mathematician because it has very, very simple dynamics, and there's a lot of things that you can, you can do very quickly. Um, so a lot of work was done on measles dynamics, and that was really when I started sort of doing mathematical biology. I then moved during the time I was in Cambridge from thinking about measles and a few other infectious diseases. We we had the foot and mouth outbreak in 2001 and that was really when I started getting sort of heavily involved in the idea of sort of maths and science for policy. Very much at a, at a sort of junior level of, of just producing the results and giving them to, to Brian Grenfell at the time to sort of present to what was then math but is now DEFRA. So that was really when I started sort of first getting sort of heavily involved. And then as that was sort of funded under um, a Royal Society University Research Fellowship, so I was lucky enough to get one of those. And then towards the end, I moved back to Warwick to a lectureship and then a readership position and and finally professor. Um, And, you know, through all that time, I think I've become more and more applied more biological and more interested in sort of what maths can tell us that's useful um, in the real world. And I think most applied mathematicians are looking for that usefulness. Um, And I think in in mathematical biology and certainly in the understanding the spread of infectious diseases, I think we can can really find that. In terms of my sort of role within SPIDER, that was, that's very much just sort of, you know, an evolution of, of things. So Originally, we had WIDA, which was, was Warwick Infectious Disease Epidemiological Research, and then we, we merged with systems biology. And someone said, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we called it Spider? And after that, the name just stuck. But it's, it's been very good fun over the last um, two to three years to actually sort of bring together the different elements that are in Spider and just see how much it's grown. During this time, have you had opportunities to change your career path? And if so, were there key factors that resulted in you choosing to pursue roles in academia? I feel in some ways I've, I've very much just sort of stumbled into my current career path. Um, very much sort of, you know, I'm still almost waiting to grow up and decide what I'm going to do. Um, so, you know, I, I have just sort of moved from an undergraduate to PhD to postdoc to into academia. I mean, there, there has been times when I've sort of had time to sit and reflect. So especially after the sort of the pandemic. So um, certainly after foot and mouth outbreak and then, you know, moving from a, a postdoctoral position to a lectureship position. And then sort of more recently, even just sort of with the end or coming towards the end of, of the COVID outbreak, there's, there has been sort of chance to sit and reflect. But it almost feels that I think academia is, is the ideal environment for me. You know, you've got the freedom to investigate things that are interesting, but there's also becoming more and more, as I, as I sort of get older and more senior, more, more about sort of nurturing the next generation, which is always sort of really, really refreshing. 
That's great, Matt. Thank you. And in particular, associated with your role as director of Spider, could you describe to listeners the like, main commitments and duties of, for that role specifically? So I think it's it's a mixture between long term and short term roles. So I think there's there's an awful lot of short term firefighting when things happen. Um, you know, it could be rooms, it could be anything to do with just the running of the centre, people having problems. There's a lot of sort of short term reactive work that I need to do, especially interfacing with the different heads of department that are represented within Spider. So Spider has members from math, stats, computer science, uh, life sciences, medicine. So it, it's a it's a wide range of people that I sort of need to interact with and sort of know who their heads of department are and be able to sort of champion their causes. But then I think there's also a lot of thinking about longer term interactions Um, what's going to be good for the centre going forward, how do we make sure it doesn't stagnate, what are going to be the key challenges where we can try and achieve large-scale funding. Um, And one of the things that's happening hopefully over the next few years is is setting up an MSc and a master's course within mathematical biology. So I'm not sort of directly doing that myself, but it's, it's an interesting direction that I'm sort of trying to steer Spider in simply so that we have a, a greater sort of teaching commitment as well as a sort of research commitment. So I think it, it is this mixture of the two different timescales between sort of emergency reaction to things that need sorting out within a few days to planning over two, three, five-year timescales for what's going to work well for the group. That prospect of a, a master's in mathematical biology to me sounds tremendously exciting, so interested to see how that develops over the, over the next few months. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be a, a good challenge. And I think it's it's probably going to have lots of interest given what we've seen recently with the pandemic and how much sort of mathematical biology of, of all forms is, is in the news. You are involved in a lot of things. And you're in leading research projects, supervising and teaching students. So with having several strands to your role, how have you felt combining those multiple responsibilities? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, I mean, it's been very different for the past two years with COVID. So I've I've been heavily involved with the the modelling and analysis of, of COVID data for SPIM and, and then on to sort of government advisors. So that has taken up a lot of my time over the past two years. So really, I'm going to have to sort of think back. I'd, I'd almost say that I go with almost what I'm feeling most guilty about. So, you know, if I haven't seen someone for a bit and I know I need to sort of go and talk to them, then that's, that's you know, that becomes my priority. I think generally academics are always sort of chasing the most interesting thing that they're currently working on. So that's that's always the sort of motivation for research. You know, you've got this question in the back of your head about why is something happening and that therefore you sort of, you want to push that research on. But as I've become sort of more senior within the group, that pushing the research on is not necessarily always my research. It can be my you know, postdocs, it can be PhD students, it can be undergraduate research researchers. So that it's more about sort of pushing that forward. Teaching again is, you know, that that's more constrained because that's timetabled. And so, you know, that that very much fits in around sort of university life. But again, it's something that's really enjoyable sort of talking to students. You know, most of what I do is talking about my research. So again, it's it's just thinking about how to express what I do in a different way. So yeah, you, you have to have lots of different hats and you have to be able to switch between them quickly. But that's part of what makes academic life so interesting. And related to that, has there been a particular skill set that you've developed kind of as you've progressed through through the roles to a more senior position that you found like particularly surprising to yourself that you didn't originally envisage you'd ever need? Well, I think going back, you know, I, I went into mathematics because I wasn't any good at writing. Um, and then as time's gone on, I spend more and more of my time writing things. I, it, I think it's now called persuasive writing in English, you know, how you actually write something to persuade someone that your idea is good or to give you some funding or, you know, you're trying to gain support for spider in terms of new positions or whatever so i think a lot of it is is in terms of that 
there's a lot of, of person management, which I feel is something I'm only just really scratching the surface with and pr could probably learn more about how you actually manage everybody in a research group and make sure that everyone's pulling in the same direction and what you can do to encourage that. And I hope I do that by example, but there's probably other techniques that could come in. And I think, you know, there's also the, the you know, just the personal interactions that you need as a, as a sort of director of SPIDER, just building up the rapport with lots of different individuals. So I'm absolutely terrible with names. So I think that's, that's one of the things that I need to try and improve over, over in the future, just being able to remember you know, everybody's name as soon as I meet them. I can usually remember what they do uh, and sort of how, you know, I can probably tell you chapter and verse about them. But yeah, names is something I think I need to improve on. Thanks for sharing that insight. I think that exemplifies how we never stop learning, essentially, irrespective of the position you're in. To our listeners interested in working in research in biological and medical sciences, what would be one piece of advice you would like them to take away? Um, so I think if they're coming from a mathematical background like I have, I think it's, it's never to underestimate the amount of biology you need to learn. There's always going to be um, details that are going to be important. Um, and I think there's there's always a lot to learn. I'm still, you know, I've, I've been in the field now for about 30 years and I'm still learning new things about biology and medicine and immunology in particular is, is one of the things that I'm starting to learn more and more about. And so I think it it's a matter of talking to the experts, understanding what lies behind the problem and then being able to sort of abstract that into a sort of mathematical context so it's not always about putting in every single detail but it's at least about knowing that those details exist so you know what you're ignoring or what you're overlooking when you actually generate a problem but I, I also think it's really important to understand and interact with with biologists and medics just so that you can centre what you're doing in in the questions that are most important Thanks again, Matt, for joining us today. It's been really insightful to, to hear from you. And thank you for your leadership of the Spider Centre as well. I think it's a tremendous place to be working. So thank you. Thanks all. Thank you all for listening to this episode of the Spider Careers podcast. And we hope you can join us again next time. <laughs>